can a murderer go to heaven? Let's get our Bibles and let's get started. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. As you know, we talk about Christ, we talk about life, and we uncover biblical practices so that you and I can explore our unknown years. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you know when the latest videos are coming out and I'll be doing live streams too sometime in the middle of the week. So you want that notification bell so you can be updated on all the next steps on this channel. So today we're looking at a very serious but interesting topic which is like, can a murderer go to heaven? And I mean, the first place that I really wanna start when dealing with this problem that we have is to go to the Old Testament and look at some of the people that we look up to, look at some of the people and what they did. Did they sin? What, what kind of happened here? So let's go. So we know that from looking at the Old Testament, we can go back to Abraham, you know, the forefather, the father of faith, they call him, you know, he is one of the best of the best. And even he sins, and you know, we could talk about that more in the live stream, but right here right now we can even go to Noah you know the guy who had the ark and you know he was one of the best people on earth and God saved him in the flood amongst everyone else and let's see what he did in Genesis 9 21 it says he drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent so wait isn't that Noah isn't that the guy that was so good? I mean, he's laying there drunk and uncovered. That means he was naked, just laying down. And we see that even some of the best can slip sometimes and even the best can fail. So, you know, there's someone I'm pretty sure he's not gonna have anything and that's Moses. That's our good friend, Moses. He's the one that liberated the Israelites from slavery and brought them across the Red Sea, there's no way that he could be found in the Bible like in an embarrassing and sinful way. Oh, I guess we got to look into the Bible. In Exodus chapter 2 verse 11 to 15 it says, One day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their burdens and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together, and he said to the man in the wrong, Why do you strike your companion? He answered, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, surely the thing is known. So I can't believe it guys, even Moses, Moses killed someone. We see in this story here in Exodus that he saw someone doing something wrong and he took up something and he struck him and hid him in the sand and killed him. We're looking at these people from the Old Testament, these highly regarded people. We're looking at Abraham, we're looking at Noah, we're looking at even Moses and we're seeing that Moses is a murderer and this is something that just came to my attention when I was doing a Bible study, um, a weekly Bible study with some friends and I was just like, oh my days, I can't believe Moses actually killed people. And you know, you can watch an earlier video of mine where I talk about how faith is so important. I mean, these people were people of faith. You know, it was faith that allowed them to do every single thing that they did and they were very close to the Lord, even speaking to the Lord on some occasions. But yet we see that Moses murder someone but just like the two hebrew people said you know before we go ahead and judge these people first we have to judge ourselves in matthew chapter 7 verse 5 it says you hypocrite first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye and that's exactly what we're going to do right now the question that we need to be asking is are we murderers in Matthew chapter 5 
verse 21 and 22, it says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. <sighs> Guys, the real issue here is that we have all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. And when Christ came down and he looked at the Ten Commandments, he saw that it's not just about what you do, but it's about what's in your heart and it's about your thought process. And in this verse, it's talking about if you're angry towards your brother, which I know that you and I have both been like that at some point. At some point, we get angry. At some point, we feel angry. At some point, we do get mad and we do things that we just can't take back. And Christ is saying that if we continue to do these things, we are the same as murderers. So the big question here is, what do we do if we have sinned? In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So we see that we have a very gracious God. We have a very good God. And although we are sinners, he still forgives us if we just repent and call on his name. You know, he still loves us. He still takes care of us. And he just waits patiently for us to come to him and just be open and honest about what we have done. And sometimes, as a Christian, this could be hard to do. This could be hard to remember sometimes. But we have to remember that our God is an understanding God. He's been there. Jesus has walked on this earth. He's had to deal with the temptations of sin. Hebrews chapter 4, 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. So we see here that Christ walked this earth. He already did this battle. You know, he lived, he died, and he rose again. And he lived on this earth without sin, without any sin. But that doesn't mean he wasn't tempted. He was in the wilderness where Satan tempted him constantly with thing, with thing after thing after thing and he just quoted the word of God you know but that doesn't mean he doesn't understand exactly what we're going through when we're tempted to do these sinful things. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So we see here that when Jesus Christ came to this earth and he walked and he was tempted without sin, he went onto that cross to bear the sins for every single person, every living human being that will ever live on this earth. And that includes you and me. So, you know, Christ has been there and he has chosen to take it all upon himself. So isn't it amazing, guys? Isn't it great? That when we become Christian, we don't have to pay that cost. We don't have to pay that fine for our sins because Christ takes it on himself. So the big question is, which we're trying to answer after all of this is, can a murderer go to heaven? And the answer is yes. We should be so thankful and praising him every single day for the grace that he gives us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not of your own doing it is the gift of god not a result of works so that no one may boast and by the way that's my favorite verse so there you go but we're seeing here that we're saved through grace not of our own works no one can boast about the salvation that we have received 
from Christ and the daily and weekly and monthly and yearly changes that he makes to our lives all the time. So, you know, let's say you did murder someone and let's say you went ahead and you confessed that to the Lord and you confessed that you wanted him to be your Lord and your savior, he will forgive you, you know? He will forgive you and by his grace, he will set you free from the condemnation of sin. If that's something that you have not done yet, I will encourage you to make that step today. You know, take that step, take that free gift that God is offering because he did not come down here to condemn you. He came down here to save you. And I leave this final verse with you so you can just think about the choice you have to make. We go to John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So isn't that wonderful, guys? We see in the first part of this verse that God loves you. You could be a murderer. You could do all kinds of different sin, but God still loves you. And guess what? Even if you still don't respect him and acknowledge him for the king and the God that he is, he still loves you. But you know what? He didn't come down to condemn you. He came down to save you. He came down to set you free from that sin. He came down to die on that cross so that you don't have to and you can have everlasting life with him. Okay guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. And you know, I'll be going on a live stream sometime this week, so you need that notification bell on, cause I'll be talking about my experience, you know, on this topic. And what do I have to say? What's my opinion? We could just have a little chat about different things. So check me out on the live stream at some point this week. And we can continue to talk about this topic in the comment section and also on the Unknown Years Facebook page. And I hope that we have learned something here in this video. So let's continue to explore our Unknown Years.